Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed. Today, we're talking about the energy within a house or a living space. So this also includes things like apartments and other types of abodes. And we're going to be getting into some of the negative energy that could accumulate in a living space, how that would affect the people living there, uh, whether or not things like saging works and other such um, really um, interesting topics today that will be beneficial for you um, in your living space. So Bonnie, how are you today? I'm good. Good topic. Yeah, I like Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I like um, there's something brighter in your your video. Maybe it's the lighting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the lighting. Maybe, it's, just like, maybe yeah. it's the uh, the positive energy. The positive energy. Right? <laughs> that could be that too, Cynthia. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to be talking about various aspects of energy within a house, but mm -hmm. I think one of the important things we're going to cover more extensively is about negative energy, because that could really seriously impact people. And yeah. also when people know that they know what to do about it. So let's start. My first question is about, you know, when I'm talking about, uh, when I'm asking you the question, negative energy, when you refer to that within a house, what types of things could that be? Is it just negative emotions? Could it be like beliefs that are the energy of beliefs? Could it be entities? Like what are the various types of things that would be in that category of negative energy that could be? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So probably the most common energy when I think about negative energy in a house generally comes from the occupants or prior occupants that were there. Like, for example, I can walk into a room, let's just say that I'm coming to someone's home, and they just had a major fight. And all that energy is, you know, they're still feeling it They're that energy is leave, you know, coming out of the body, all this emotional frequency. So I can go into the house, and I'm going to feel all that energy, all that emotional energy. Now, generally, that kind of energy does dissipate and, and dissolves and is no longer there. And when we have, uh, let's just say, a person that lived in the house and then they left and then somebody else purchased the house and they're experiencing all this negative energy. So what can also happen is when there's traumas or there's intense things that happen, um, horrific things that happen, traumas that happen, abusive energies that happen, those energies don't necessarily just leave. What happens is the, the house actually absorbs these energies, if that makes sense. Okay, it's an emotional energy. And remember, everything is energy. So even our walls, our furniture, this is also why I used to do this as well. Like people would have jewelry or whatever, a watch, uh, rings, necklaces, whatever. And I could hold it and I could get information because these things absorb energy. Okay. So the house is absorbing energy, the kitchen, all the appliances, all the, you know, the walls, the whatever's there, the fixtures, they're just absorbing the energy of all that intense emotional uh, upheaval. So you have that. And then you can have discarnates. I mean, this is a, this one's kind of cool, but not really, but it is, you know, you have people that have passed and they're no longer in a physical body. And sometimes they'll come to a home that we, they either knew it or they lived there, or they'll go to a completely new house. They never even seen before because they like how it feels. So you can be feeling and sensing other people in your space. You know, the truth is, is there's always people coming through the house. All right. It's like, there, if you could shift your, your, your awareness to a different way of sensing energy, I do it all the time. And when I do, it's like in that same overlay, like there's massive amounts of people floating through, coming through, because there's also the alternate, alternate realities and parallel universes and other time and space. And, you know, so we have all of that can actually be happening as well in the house. Um, we also have energy vortexes that come up from the earth. 
there's major things that come to the earth. There's lots of really good, powerful, potent, beautiful energies, but then there's a lot of really darker energies, negative energies that come through. I just want to back up for a moment. Um, I did a clearing in, it was in California and it was a hot springs and many people had tried to clear it. And that hot springs literally had been a place where mafia had been there, a lot of prostitution, a lot of like uh, drug stuff, a lot of uh, really intense negative things, torture, things of that nature. And the darkness that was there continued to be there. So when I went there with another person to, to clean it up, to close all the, all the things, what I actually discovered was the major wormholes of negativity that get opened up through people's energy. Like, for example, let's just say that in our, let's just say that in, here we go out and we're doing, we're doing atrocities, we're torturing people, we're hurting people. Well, it, it gets absorbed into the land. Okay. But what had happened, um, what had happened at that particular hot springs was a uh, year, it had been several hundred, a couple hundred years late earlier, several hundred years earlier, before the peoples were wiped out or removed, the Indian Native Americans, there, they were there and these other, the, this is when the white men were coming. Well, anyway, they wiped out the village while these other warrior hunters were out hunting. They come back and one guy, one of the warriors, it was like intense. I mean, he cursed the land, he cursed everything and his energy, his emotion pulled up a blackness. And that's, was, that's what was coming through for all these hundreds of years. So I was able to clear that you know, but what happened was, as I opened up to the energy and let a positive energy, now that place is soaring. It's, it's like happening. It's like beautiful now. Okay. But the point is, is that things that happen, the things that people do, we can, we can enter, send energy down into the earth that doesn't just go away. And then things that are like, if we build on those areas or we're living close to those areas, walking over those areas, we're feeling all of that really intense negative energy. So that's another thing that can be happening in a person's home. Other times too, we, people call in energies. People can call in negativity. People that hold a lot of negativity, hold a lot of intense beliefs, they're pulling in darkness. They can start pulling in things like what I call the powers of darkness, which is negative, really negative energies, is evil energies, um, you know, where we're starting to get the demonic energies and, you know, just the things that have to do with the powers of darkness. There can be curses and spells, castings, hexes. Uh, there can be things like people working with voodoo, witchcraft, sorcery, wizardry, uh, Satanism. All of those anchor very dark negative energies in, in, play, in a house. Okay? And just because people leave does not mean the energy leaves. Um, and then just ourselves, just being a really negative, always finding fault and looking for the bad, the victim energy, that kind of stuff. Well, we're sending that out constantly. Okay. Just remember, we're emotional beings. When we have emotional energy, that emotional energy, if we're not owning it and claiming it and knowing it, we're pushing it out. Not only does it get stuck in the house, but it also hits other people and it can go into other people. So the negative energies uh, that are happening in a house, like I said before, it doesn't just clear out because, you know, we're, we want it to. Or, and that's, that comes to that point, too, around like a lot of like the old ways. I want to make it clear. The old ways, the old paradigm is over. OK, that means all the things that we have done. That we thought was working, like for example, I'm going to put a bubble around me so I'll protect myself. Oh, I'm going to use sage so I can, you know, clear my aura and clear the space. Okay, I want to put salt around the windows to keep negative demonic energies out. Um, you know, those kinds of ways. Uh, those are what that's the old paradigm. Okay, keep in mind we all, you know, we had to find ways to to help and, and make create protections, things of that nature. So we created and developed what I call the old ways. Well, simply put, the old ways are over. They weren't really working anyway. <laughs> like, for example, if you think you're going to use sage to get rid of a demon, it's not going to happen. Okay? If you think you're going to sage negativity where atrocities have happened, you might lighten a little bit of a space, 
temporarily, just as you're moving that energy smoke around with your intention, but you're not clearing anything. Nothing's being released, completely cleared and lifted out of the space. Okay. Again, those are the old ways. So if you really want to clear negative energy, then you have to intentionally clear negative energy. That means you need to tune in. Let's just say there's discarnates, negative discarnates in the house, causing havoc, opening cupboards, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. They don't want you there. They want you out. Okay. Well, <laughs> now you got to get them out. So that means you have to find a way to communicate with them and convince them that it's, that's best for them to go somewhere else. That's the best way to do it. Either that, or you have to call in somebody who can, has the ability to cast someone out. Okay. But if you're capable and you can communicate with the spirits of the dead, talk to them, show them why, help them to go, and they'll leave. Okay. And then the other ways in order to shift, like pretend like this house has, uh, you know, like a lot of dark energies in it, then I'm not going to be using sage. I'm actually going to be connecting with these energy frequencies, whatever they are, whether it's an emotional energy or trauma energy or beliefs or, ener you know, emotions, whatever. I'm going to use the white flame. I'm going to use the light of creation, the all that is. And I'm going to start spinning out the energy. So I'm going to create like this energy swirl, like a tornado moving, moving. And I'm going to start encompassing down into the earth itself. And then all the way through the house, outside of the house, several, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 feet, 100 feet outside the house. So I'm literally moving this energy and I'm casting it up into the light. So it cannot be here anymore. Okay. So for me, using the white flame or using, using the white light, to spin these energies out works really, really well with the clean spaces. So when you walk in, it just feels, wow, this feels like a peace. There's so much light here. Okay. So that's um, another way, like if we want to clear out energies out of the house. Okay. So again, you know, most people can do this, but a lot of people cannot. If you don't have any expertise or any experience, I don't encourage you to be dealing with really dark energies because you don't know what you're doing. And unfortunately, they can attach to you and cause you harm and affect your well-being. So when we're dealing with all this negative energy, dark energies, even evil energies, demonic energies, again, people, here's the thing. Nothing is greater than the white flame. Nothing is greater than the light, the white light of creation. Okay. You bring those in. I bring them into blackness all the time. I bring them into the demonic energy and that light. They don't like the light, dark, dark energies, evil energies, demonic energies do not like that light. Okay. So we really want to get these demons out of the energy field. We want to get any kind of dark Lords, any kind of like any, anything of darkness we want out. Okay. Again, the light is the best way to deal with that, to work with that. And it sometimes too is going to be necessary to find out why is this house being attacked? Why are these creatures here? Why are these en uh, entities here? Why is all this dark emotional energy here? The reason we want to find out is by finding out, we can unravel that at the core, release any agreements and contracts that have been made, oaths, vows, promises, allegiances that have been made, and then it's never going to come back. It's over. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're cleaning something up that so that it's permanent, that's no, not going to come back and that we don't have to maintain always holding the light. That's not what it's about. We need to relax our bodies. We need to be able to just be, be, be able to live our lives without having to think, okay, I got to hold the light or I got to do this. No, it's about ending it completely. So it's done, never to come back again. I like that you say that, Bonnie, about it's done, because I remember, um, and, and I know a lot of people I know who watch this um, podcast know my story about how I've been attacked so much by dark forces, because I talked about it in several episodes. And this was going on for a long time before, before I found you. And I was trying to figure out how to get rid of them. So I use things like sage, and I would do that <laughs> maybe like every day, three days I would, I would sage. Um, I would do that bubble of protection around me when I would go to sleep, right? Like, and I would call in Archangel Michael and all these things I heard of people say. Yeah. And 
none of it worked. I it no. it really didn't work at all. And I I thought too, like, well, maybe I did it wrong. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, people want to believe that these things work because we've seen it. You know what I'm saying? We've seen it in other people's cultures, like Native Americans. You know, they use sage for whatever they're, you know, for different things. But you have to understand, it's just for that moment, right here and right now. And all you're doing is making room for a clearer energy temporarily. Because that's all it is. It's a temporary, you know, like if I'm going to use sage and some kind of smoke, it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, whatever I'm using, that to be sage, anything. I, I have intention and I'm spinning this around, you know, somebody or whatever. So for a few moments, yeah, it'll be gone, but not very far away and it'll come right back. Right. I remember one time I used sage and I thought, oh, I'm safe for maybe two days. And then I took a nap and I got attacked because <laughs> usually I would get attacked in that in-between Right. And sleep and, you know, it's kind of yeah. like a sleep paralysis ish, but not really. Oh, that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I got to tag that day. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't work. I don't have my sage <laughs> plant anymore. I had a sage plant. It's, it's, I don't have it anymore because it just didn't work. Um, yeah. But now I don't do any of that stuff. And because I found your work and, you know, I don't do the bubble thing. I don't do sage and I don't get attacked right. you know, before I got attacked, like almost every day sometimes. Right. Um, you know, especially right. at the beginning when I woke and uh, it was happening like every day almost. Wow. And so yeah. it just it's so much better now. I mean, I know like there's still some things, I think, but it's not even close to where it was. Before. Right. Yeah. It's a matter of clearing, cleaning up and release, you know, clearing up and cleaning up the past. And that's in past incarnations, it's the, the beliefs, the the interactions that we have had. The things that we have done, we've opened up these gateways, we've opened up portals, we've opened up all kinds of stuff, we made agreements to have our have experiences. So we have to unravel all of that to bring it to an end. And the greatest thing anybody can do in any kind of situation where you're experiencing attack of darkness or powers of darkness on any level is we need to face them. Like I, I did a little article about this and because I was attacked from the, what was like in the eighties and until like 2001. And I finally turned around and faced, faced these demons that were attacking me. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. I will, you know, I'll wipe you fucking out of here. Okay. So that was the end. It's never happened again, ever. All right. So we are the ones like if we're afraid of course they're going to have power over us but if we're like okay this is not i'm done here i'm done turn around and face the scary thing that you're afraid of because these demons they don't like being uh you know where we confront them because they they're all big bad you know powerful until we face them and show them no you're not you have no power over me and then they just you know they, they don't, then they go somewhere else so there are different things we can do to protect ourselves and the empowerment is your own light. That's it. Your own light is the power. All right. So, Bonnie, I know you talked about using that tornado energy and um, having like a, a bubble of light around when you're doing a house clearing. You were talking about that earlier. And mm -hmm. I know you do. You teach all this stuff in a home clearing training, right? It's, I, I know you have that training where you teach people. So mm -hmm. all of those processes you go through real, in real detail. So anybody would be able to do it, right? I just want to know about that. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's it, yes, it's helping people to know what to do different different areas. Like in that house clearing, we did have someone who killed themselves in one of the bedrooms. Uh, there was a lot of really dark negative energy frequencies like in the kitchen. And, you know, so the whole house, we just kind of went through each room and talked about you know, the clearing and, and what was happening, that type of thing. So you can actually, we, you know, everyone that was there could feel the difference as each room got cleared. So yes, it's a good, it's a good training on house clearing. I'll leave a description in the link below for people who want to purchase that. And you do go through every single room in that house and you, you go in detail about what you're actually doing and I think uh, that anybody, even if they have no experience with this kind of work, could pick it up and mm -hmm. do some, you know, all the things you mentioned in that training and get results. So I'll leave a yeah. link in the description below for that one. So, Bonnie, I 
I want to ask you about how people could know they have a negative energy in their house. Obviously, if it, if it was like a poltergeist thing, then it, that's pretty obvious. But I'm talking yeah, something yeah. a little less extreme where right, yeah, it's yeah. kind of relatively normal, I guess, um, average home. Mm-hmm. And how would they know that there's some energy they could clear out? Right. Yeah. So oftentimes people can actually feel like different rooms. You know, like, for example, we bought a house one time up in the country and the bat, there was something weird in the bathroom. Okay. You could feel it. After you go in the bathroom, you can feel something doesn't feel quite right. So for anybody, I mean, we, we're all sensitive. Everyone has the ability to sense things, but a lot of times we've shut ourselves off from our own sensitivity, from our own knowing. And those that still have some kind of sense, like every room you go into feels different, if that makes sense, because there's different energy in each room. And, you know, if you're you're suspecting there's negative, but you don't really know because you're not really paying attention to your own self or you haven't really got a sense of uh, your own abilities and your own sensing, you know, to play with going into each room and just see what it feels like to you. Now, other people will feel, oh, there's something negative here. And you can feel it. You don't know what it is, but the odds are it's either emotional er energy carried over or even from your own family that's still in the house. There can be a discarnate or or more discarnates in in the area. Um, If you're going to if there if there really is dark force, you're going to feel it. Even even people who are not, you know, tuned into their own knowing and their own sense ability to sense energy. Somehow, like something, you know, you just feel like something's off here, something's wrong, I feel afraid, I feel uncomfortable, I'm bothered by something. Those are all red flags that there's something there that needs to be cleared or, you know, cleared out or, or released from the, from the energy field. Um, and sometimes there are to- we need the help of someone professional. Other times, you know, most people are just lost, wandering and get stuck in a house and you, it's an easy thing to help them go home. Um, you know, it just depends on the situation, the severity of it and the intensity of it. But uh, as far as people being able to sense things, again, more people are going to be attuned than others and just pay, start paying attention to your own self. Cause the body is always talking to us always. So when, if let's just say that we haven't been, you know, paying attention and, and yet, Every time I go in the bathroom or every time I go in the kitchen, I have a little agitation or I have a little like anxiety or whatever. You know what I mean? So what you're doing is you're just kind of paying attention to your own self. And as you are living your life normally, you are paying attention so that when you do walk into a certain room, oh, something feels, I can feel that. I can sense that. You know, I sense something doesn't feel quite as comfortable. I'm not as relaxed. I feel my, I feel like my body tightening up or. I feel like my belly's kind of getting anxious, you know? So these are all red flags to let you know that, ah, oh, you're sensing something. You may not know what it is, but at least now you're aware that you are picking up on something that's in your home that you don't know what it is, but at least you now know there's something there. And then as you begin to pay more and more attention, you'll notice, okay, every time I walk into that room, I have a grab in the belly. That means there's something in there. Okay. And then you can play with it. You know, like if you can't, if you don't have the ability to communicate, let's just say you feel like, okay, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to, let's just, I'm going to pretend it's a discarnate. So I go into that room and I go, okay, I know you can hear me. What you're doing is you're intentionally speaking to the energy, the etheric realms, the astral planes, and you're speaking at that level. So that's why when I'm doing a clearing, I'll say, okay, I'm, I'm speaking now to the discarnates. I shift my energy. So I'm meeting them in that dimension, in that, that area frequency, the astral planes where they exist. Okay. So they just do that same. Just what you do is go, okay, I can feel there's someone here. I'm here to help you. Okay. You don't even, don't even bother about trying to have a conversation, but you're just going to play with this and go, okay. I have a really wonderful thing I want to share with you. Today's a special day. Today is the day of salvation, absolution, liberation, and your family is waiting for you. And I intentionally call family, intentionally call, asking for the loved ones of the whoever's in my home. Okay. 
I'm, I don't have to see anything. I don't have to know anything. I don't have to believe anything. I'm just doing this. Okay. So then I go, okay, I'm calling in your family, your loved ones. Look who's there. Look, look, look. Look up to your loved ones. They just want to take you home. They've been waiting for you for a long time. Can you look up now? I'm just going to have your loved ones reach down, take your hands. So go ahead and hold their hands. They're going to take you to the light, the light of home, the light that came for you. Okay. And then you see if that, so go ahead and have them go home. Now, again, remember, you're just, you don't see anything. You don't know anything. You're just testing it out. Okay. So then you do that piece and then you go into another room and do some other things, come back in, see how the room feels. So if you're noticing, well, it feels lighter then you've got rid of them. They've left. Okay. If it still feels dense, dark, then that means, okay, they didn't leave. So now, now I need to go a little bit deeper into, into that unraveling. So then you have to remind them that they have died. Okay. Cause that's often what happens. They don't remember they died. They don't know they died. That I want to be dead. So, okay, it's like, okay, I want you to remember because you can floating above your body. You hear me say these things floating above your body, looking down at your body. The body died. Your body died. It's dead. Body died. And if you can even yep, see what happened to it, they, they uh, buried it or they, um, they burned it. Well, I forget the word is when you burn the body. Um, it, you know, so they did different things that happen and and show them that the body's dead. Show them the light. Say, I want you to look up under the light. The light came for you. The light is home. You're going to feel really safe. You're going to begin to remember the truth when you look into the light, because that is the truth. So you're just, again, you don't know what's happening. You're just speaking it. So look into the light. And then loved ones are there as well. So now it's time to go home into the light and then go ahead and have them, you know, loved ones look into the light and have them go up into the light. Okay. Now, normally that's going to get it because sometimes it's just they didn't know they died. Other times, you know, they, did, they were afraid they were going to be judged and then no judgment happened. You know, you're dealing with at those kind of levels. Now, if we got some kind of demonic stuff, then, um, you know, the novice don't even bother. Get somebody out, get someone in to help you. Okay. But these are things anybody can do that don't have any ability to sense energy at all. Okay. So you're just you're just walking somebody through it. You're not getting communication. You're just doing it and see how that feels when that's done. Bonnie, in your home clearing training, because um, I watched it a couple of days ago get to get ready for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned in that training um, that the negative energies or entities, they tend to go into dark spaces or corners or oh, yeah, 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 into, yeah. Um, even uh, into objects. Places. Sorry. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even into objects that are somewhat like the color is actually darker, right. like maybe black. And so what is with that, at least uh, especially that last part where if a color of something like this is kind of dark, <laughs> mm -hmm. what is it about what is it about those that um, attracts entities? It's a hiding place. It's a place for you. They can go and be invisible, not be bothered. Uh, you know, sometimes people that are in bodies, they'll just find like little nooks and crannies, a dark area. They'll go into like a little bit of a, a wormhole or, or like hiding areas, like in, you know what I mean? Like in the livers or in different of the organs, but they go where it's seemingly darker, even though when you're inside the body, there's no light. Okay. But you also have the, the vibrational frequency of, of everything in the body, the blood, the organs, all of that. But basically like in the house, they, they, they go into closets. Closets are huge, you know, go into the closet because it's dark in the closet. Okay. Um, cabinets, cupboards, dark places, you know what I mean? Like dark spaces, like bathrooms that are always dark or, you know, this, because it just goes into a hiding place where they can just go. Sometimes they just want to be hidden. They don't want to be bothered. Other times, you know, they're just hiding out and very much active, but they'll come out and do different things. But a lot of them that go into the dark places, they just want to be hidden. They don't want to be bothered. They just want to have a place to feel safe to be secure. A lot of traumatized people will go into darker hiding places. So they're not seen, they're not found. So they can't be harmed anymore. You know what I mean? It's like a carryover from their life experiences. It, it's not necessarily true, but they feel somehow safer. Like I'm in this, I'm in this corner, no one can see me. So now no one's going to find me. No one's going to torture me anymore. 
no one's going to hurt me anymore, you know? So a lot of traumatized people will go into those kind of hiding places. So that's what happens. Bonnie, I guess this is my last question. And it's about the idea of, I guess, is an Eastern idea of feng shui, where oh, yeah. people believe how, where you position certain objects in a room, whether it's like maybe cardinal direction, like your your bedroom should be facing this way, or your your desk your and your workspace should be mm-hmm. facing, you know, uh, yeah, be facing yeah. the door, some, some things like that. And, yeah. and by having these things positioned in certain ways within a living space or even a workspace, mm-hmm. uh, it would actually create a better flow of energy. And is there right. truth to that? Yes, there is. Absolutely. Have you ever walked into, <laughs> have you ever walked in, I'm sorry, have you ever walked into like a house that's like freaking cluttered stuff everywhere? See, the thing for me personally, Cynthia, I feel everything okay this is probably why i did my isolation thing and um so no matter where i go i'm always feeling the energy frequency of everything so if i go into a place where there's a lot of stuff you know a lot of clutter a lot of things and even if it's um even if it's not quite so clutter but it's like old clunky big things that are that hold a certain energy frequency I can feel it. So the whole, like when things are done in a feng shui manner, you can feel the, the everything because it's an energy that just flows. It just a, it's a flow that happens. It's a smooth and it's a good positive flow. What that does is that positive flow, it really does keep things open. It opens things up even more for more finances coming through, for more love coming through, for more abundance coming through, for more joy, happiness coming through, because that whole energy is always in a beautiful moving way that's not coming up against intense energies that where the energy literally hits and splatters or how can I, because I can see it. Um, yeah, so we're energy, okay? So we have these big auras, so we're stepping into a space. We are bouncing up against everything in there. So when the energy is blocked, you know, different ways, then we feel that. So that affects our whole energy. It affects us personally on many levels. But when the energy is in that feng shui, everything open, everything flows. We feel better. Our whole world flows. It's a, it's really awesome. It's very potent, powerful. So just on that feng shui thing, absolutely. It does make a difference. Absolutely. Very potent, very powerful. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. That's good to know. I'll be looking up feng shui, (laughs) maybe moving things around. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. For people who want to go into a deeper into clearing their house and learning more about this, you do have, like I said, the home clearing training, but you also have a a group energy clearing coming up in May. Mm. It's on May 26th to 30 p.m. Eastern. And that's going to be a live one. Of course, there's always a replay and the replays are always just as effective as live. So don't mm-hmm. worry if you miss it or you can't make it to that particular time. It's still just as effective. I'll leave a link in the description so you can purchase that. It's called Clearing Negative Energy from Your Home. And is there anything else? Yet you want to mention at all before we uh, end this episode, Bonnie? Mm -hmm. I do, actually. And it has to do with the powers of darkness, you know. So people are, a lot of people are very afraid of the powers of darkness, okay? Because we have a belief that, whoa, powers of darkness, that means, you know, big energy, power over me. But here's the thing about all of that. They're only powerful when you have fear. If you're not afraid, they have no power over you. So I would encourage people to bring that into your awareness, have the awareness, have the knowing, have the understanding that the powers of darkness, kind of like the bark, the bite is bigger than the bark or something. I forget how that goes. You know what I mean? It's like they want to be intense. They want to scare you. And then you get all afraid. But if they're not scaring you, it's like they got no power over you. So remember that. So if you're ever encountering energies that you're afraid of, or you're feeling afraid, just remember, oh, I'm feeling afraid. The truth is, they only have power over me because I'm allowing it because I'm afraid. 
and they're, they don't have that power. So let me just step right up, look them right in the face, right in their eyes and say, get out of my space and never come back again. So I have a question about that um, because what if you still have agreements and contracts to be for having them come into your space, even though you're not afraid? Well, then unravel your agreements and contracts. It still <laughs> keeps presenting. Actually, you should maybe do that always anyway. Like if you have anything coming into your space and you're being attacked or feeling uncomfortable or afraid, release those agreements and contracts and know yourself in these ways, in the ways of being afraid of the powers of darkness, in the ways of feeling disempowered, in the ways of, of being taken over, you know, those just release agreements and contracts, but the white flame in front of you intentionally have those agreements and contracts come out at a soul level. You are done with that dance and release them. Sometimes you might sense, feel, see them templates, tablets, words, sparks of light, energy, frequencies, colors, intentionally release them when they're done, null and void, get out of my space and never come back. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. This was a great episode, um, like always. Yeah. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. If you're listening to this on Apple, please leave us a review, Consciousness Unleashed podcast. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. And thank you so much, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bye. Cynthia.